Folks, we made it to October. And you know what that means. It's officially Halloween. It's not even the 31st anymore. All of it, the entire month, it's all Halloween. And with a year like 2020, just give me this, all right? It's what I need to get through. As a matter of fact, I think we all need it. But enough about real life. That stuff sucks. Let's talk about spoopy things. The good, the bad, yeah. the ugly. But we'll save that for later in the month. For now, let's hit up the first item on my Halloween list. The dancing pumpkin. Yeah. Oh, look. It's my sleep paralysis demon. How have you been? So I was lucky enough to go my entire life up to this point of not knowing about this film. But then Vivian had to tell me. She was the one who said, hey, Saber, check out this fever dream of a Halloween movie. Have you heard of it? And I was like, no, I'm too busy praying to God. And then she was like, okay, well, watch it. Tell me what you think and suffer along with me. So, hey, Viv, thanks a lot. You suck. Ow! All right, so what's the story behind this movie? Well, the story here is based on a book from 1992, and it's called, unsurprisingly, The Dancing Pumpkin. It was made by a guy named Howard Butcher. I wonder if it's the butcher from The Boys. Well, well, well. Said I the Dancing Pumpkin. But here's the thing. This book was not enough. Butcher here is like, we gotta go bigger. We gotta do a movie. It's the year 2000. Time to put my story up on the screen. And it looks bad. Fortunately, I wasn't able to actually find the film. So, uh, whew, that was a close one. But here's where things get really wild. So, the film in 2000 is based on the book. Then, 17 years later, the studio, called Silver Hammer Studios, sounds like a dwarven clan from D&D, &D, well, they got back together, and they said, hey, let's do a remake. That's what the world needs. We gotta take this new technology and remake the dancing pumpkin, because we can do so much better this time around. Let's go. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for that meeting. You got Howard Butcher sitting at a coffee table with his team going, I know that the world loved my book. Right up there with J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, no doubt. And I know that my movie from 2000 was one of the greatest films of all time, but it's been 17 years. And you know what the human race needs right now? Uncanny Valley pumpkin faces. Boom, there you go. Also, uh, apparently there was a film called The Cat Returns. This barren character, screw him. Here's the dancing pumpkin instead. He is so much better. Aye, 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 aye. So I have no idea if the dancing pumpkin, the original, the book, the remake, I have no idea if any of them are successful or were successful. Were they good with critics? Eh, not so much. Did they make money? I have no idea. Maybe this is a passion project from Butcher. He is just that gung-ho about uncanny valley pumpkin faces. Or maybe this is a lucrative market. Maybe he's thinking, I gotta corner the Halloween-themed pumpkin market. I guess it was ripe for the picking. <laughs> I wanna die. So the movie starts off with this goblin running down the street, and then he gets tagged by a small pumpkin and then shrinks down, and then the pumpkin dances. Right out the gate. Just absurdity. Why not? We then learn that the pumpkins here protect the world from monsters. Monsters are trying to get out, trying to take over the globe, but these pumpkins have magic. They can come to life, and they hunt down monsters, bite them, and that shrinks the monsters down, so they're no longer a threat. If they get bitten by a pumpkin, they shrink to the size of a pumpkin seed. Then their days of scaring people are done! Kaput! <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
We gotta love me some lore. And the way the movie proceeds forward, I was asking myself, is this a sequel? Uh, there's the original film, right? Maybe that was a prequel. Or, or maybe that was the original story establishing the lore of the Dancing Pumpkin expanded universe. No, this is a remake. You're just thrown in feet first into this world with like, bam, 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 here's your information. This is what's happening. Doesn't make sense, who cares? Moving on. I'm looking left and right like, who, hey, it's, what's going on? Who are these kids? Who's a small pumpkin? Why is he small and so fast? Why are the monsters evil? Are, 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 is there a pumpkin war going on? Why does he have a nose and that pumpkin doesn't? Uh, what's happening? Well, the kids, who, by the way, are so absolutely pointless. Some of the most bland characters I've ever met. Well, they discover, along with the dancing pumpkin, who's like the main character, that there's an ogre named Fink Grinder. When I heard his name, I thought they said Fink Grinder, and all I could think of was like the app for hooking up with like, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, for the rest of the movie, I'm thinking the villain is the app, where it's like, oh no, it's Grinder. he's trying to hook up with me, gotta get out of here. And by the way, I am going to call the villain specifically Grinder moving forward. I'm pretty sure it was Fink Grinder, but we're calling him Grinder. So Grinder is an ogre from a house, and he's got some magic, and he's trying to take over the world. So the pumpkin, the dancing pumpkin, is like, we must rally our forces and go stop him. So these kids jump into pumpkins called, <laughs> and I quote, thunderbellies, and it's like the most bizarre thing ever. Because I'm like, wait, these thunderbellies, they can move fast, and you are essentially jumping in their bodies, which are hollowed out. That's creepy. I'm sorry. It's weird to me. It's like, I'd be so disturbed hopping in and then wide eye me coming out of the pumpkin being like, what just happened? I'm I don't know why I feel scarred now. So in Linkara style, the, the pumpkins sprint through the forest going super fast because guess what? Pumpkins here got special powers. They are getting chased down by some witches. One of the pumpkins gets captured by witches because <laughs> these witches are monsters, so they are fighting the pumpkins. It's, it's just a thing. Shut up. Stop asking questions. I don't want your logical questions. Fall back in line, all right? I got pumpkins to watch. One pumpkin carrying the kid gets captured by the witches. The other pumpkin and the kid and the dancing pumpkin escape to the king of pumpkins, who, by the way, according to this movie, is older than the world itself. Take that, science. Making him yet another stupid bitch. So these witches are like, we captured the pumpkin, and uh, oh, there's a kid in here, and we'll raise the kid as a warlock. And then the other witches take off, and this one other witch is like, I will train him, but before I do, I'm going to go onto the balcony and take a nap. I'm not joking, it's in the movie, look. Now you need to start your warlock training. First, sweep the floor and clean the dishes while I take a nap on my balcony. So the kid is like, how do I get out of here? Oh, thank God, a talking snake called Ponce de Leon. My, my prayers have been answered. And the snake is like, I have an idea. We'll blow up the cauldron and we'll kill the witch because you'll fall to her death and I'll fly you down because I'm a magical flying snake. Which is exactly what happens. Then the kid and the snake and the other Thunderbelly, who by the way, this other Thunderbelly has like no character. He's just a background character. They run into Papyrus and Sans. <laughs> I'm not joking. Okay, it's not them, but come on, it's close enough. Am I insulting Toby Fox by saying this? <laughs> Actually, here's the truth. These skeletons are beyond annoying. Oh my God, they are not funny. Their dialogue is so 
grinding. Yeah, <laughs> get it? Because grinder? No, actually, it's like truly terrible. I, I was like rolling my eyes. I was like, when will they shut up? Their dialogue is not funny. It's not endearing. It's not clever. It is just grinding to get through. There is no debate. I'm the most frightening. Hello, skeletons. <laughs> so the team meets up. And by the way, I'm a bit confused. The skeletons are monsters, and the pumpkins are like, we're at war with the monsters, but not these skeletons. They're the exception. So they all conveniently meet up in a forest. They find Grinder's house, and they're like, haha, we know where Grinder is. We'll send in the skeletons as scouts, and then we'll break into the home and stop Grinder from running his app. And then, like, the skeletons who are like, don't worry, we'll get in. We'll challenge Grinder to a scare off. We'll say he's too much of a wussy and that he won't let us in because he's babying out. He's afraid of how scary we are as monsters. Let us in, or we'll tell everyone in the monster world that you're afraid of us. Aye, aye. The skeletons go in. They help the other guys break in. Grinder the Ogre is like one of the most boring character designs I've ever seen. He's just a green guy wearing a trench coat. And I'm gonna save you all a lot of headache here. What ultimately happens is the Ogre finds the two kids, the dancing pumpkin, the thunder bellies, constantly on the flying snake and the skeletons. And they're in a room and they're like, we have to use sunlight to get the Ogre. It will kill him. By the way, the kids have like these magic power rings. Okay, I guess I can shoot the sunlight, I think. <laughs> I think that's what we're told. My brain was so numb by this point that I completely forgot. So the the kids and the pumpkin are like, ha ha, uh, Grinder the Ogre. <laughs> I can't get over that name. We're gonna raise the blinds and use the sunlight to get you. But the sunlight didn't go far enough. And Grinder's like, oh, uh, that was close. Better sit in my chair within like, five feet of the window and uh, just take it easy. And the kids are like, psych, here are the rings. They can shoot sunlight. Boom, ogre's dead. And he's defeated. And the skeletons, I think they live at the castle. And then the kids go home with the pumpkins. And that's the movie. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. The witches never show up again. The dancing pumpkin himself really doesn't do that much. It's, it's all so bizarre. And these characters are so poorly written and they're just annoying and empty or a combination of both. I don't know if this film thought it was like, here we go. We're going to become one of the main pillars of the Halloween movie cycle. It's going to be the same way like Charlie Brown and the Great Pumpkin. We're going to be that plus more. And did they pull that off? We found your baby bonnet. You must have been one ugly baby. Uh, no. So what are my overall thoughts about this movie? The story, let's talk about that. This story is so confusing. The way they throw you into a world with lore, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having lore in your setting. But here, it's like confusing. Who's what now? The pumpkins and the monsters and the powers and the, the what? Wait, what, what, what? It leaves you in the dust. Within a few minutes, it's like, and off we go. It's like, duh, give me, give me just a few more minutes, guys. I gotta soak this in before we go sprinting through a pumpkin's head with a forest chase scene from The Incredibles, all right? I, I need a moment to breathe, thank you. But there's no time for breathing. You have to be introduced to these characters who are empty as well. You've got kid one and two. You got the dancing pumpkin who, surprisingly, wasn't that big of a deal in the movie. You got Flying Snake, you got Background Thunderbellies, you got witches who show up and then they just disappear. And then you got Grinder, the ogre, who is just like one of the most generic, basic ass villains I've ever seen. I'm evil and I will use my magic to defeat the pumpkins and rule the world. Nothing can stop me except off-brand sands and papyrus. Look at the poor grumpy ogre. He's lost his baby bonnet. While watching this movie, I actually laid my head back on the couch and I could feel my eyes rolling into the back of my head. 
as my brain was being numbed over and my thoughts, I was falling out of consciousness. I thought actually I was dying for a second. That's how bad it was. I even had my friend watching it with me and I snapped out of the dying process and looked at him and said, this sucks, doesn't it? Like this is hard to watch. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Boring kit design, boring skeletons, Ogre who's got a pretty lame ass design with his coat as well. You got these uncanny valley faces, I can't get over that. Look at these noses, these faces, the cheekbones. Why do pumpkins have cheekbones? They don't got cheeks, they don't got bones. And by some miracle, they were able to do this wrong in both ways. When it comes to a simple design, where it's like, don't go too human with this, just kind of keep it like a jack o lantern or whatever. Is that how you say that word? A jack o lantern? A jack, a jack o lantern. Wow, I'm having a moment right now, folks. You know what I'm talking about? A jack o lantern. What's it called? I'm forgetting what it's called. Jack o lantern. Whatever. Dancing pumpkin has a hole for a nose. King Rotundra and the Thunderbellies and small little pumpkin guy have cheekbones and an actual human nose and human eyes and uh, it's gross. So at the end of the day, we have a film here that has a bad story that's very boring and cumbersome, empty characters who are annoying and cannot hold my attention, and then animation that's pretty creepy. Now that being said, I wouldn't say that this movie is altogether bad. I think the animation looks competent at times. I don't like the designs, but the animation itself, some of the backgrounds, competent. I think this studio could have made a successful TV Halloween movie. It's just that the source material is not good. Howard Butcher and his book and his writing for this script and his screenplay, no good. Scrap it, start over or overhaul it or something. This is way too much of a nonsensical fever dream. That is by some miracle, a combination of utter confusion and absolute boredom. Don't know how you pulled that off. It's like you were bad in two separate ways and fused it together. So overall, would I recommend this movie? For quality, no, absolutely not. Go watch Scary Godmother instead. Go watch The Nightmare Before Christmas. But when it comes to schlocky, B-movie Halloween stuff, I guess you could watch The Dancing Pumpkin. <laughs> if you really hate yourself that much. Just don't blame me when it's three o'clock in the morning and you slowly open up your eyes and you see the Thunderbelly sleep paralysis pumpkin grabbing you by the hands and shoving you into his body and then running through a forest with you rattling around in his insides. <laughs> the dancing pumpkin, he wants to get you inside of him. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> All right, so that's the first thing on my list. What's after this? Oh, Coraline, awesome. Wait, hold on. Why does this say Caroline? What is going on, Caroline? You're like totally freaking me out. Oh, oh no.